Here's another video taking a closer look at my mechanical color television. The idea of using a spinning disc to create an image was first proposed by uh, Paul Nipkow uh, around 1884. Although it wasn't until uh, the mid-1920s uh, when John Logie Baird, uh, a Scottish inventor, was able to actually demonstrate a working system. It, it took that long for the te technology to really get to the point where it could be made to work. Uh, so let's take a look, closer look at how this works here. So the disc, this disc has uh, a total of 32 holes arranged in a spiral fashion. So basically 32 holes, so that's about every, about every 12 and a half degrees. Um, there's another hole. And as the disc turns, you can see that the holes get progressively closer to the center. And then, you know, back to the, to the top again. So if you, if you look at what happens as the disc rotates, in this case, the disc is designed to rotate in the clockwise direction. So if you, if you follow the path of a single dot, a single hole within a small sector, then as the disc turns, the hole moves across from left to right. And then just as the first dot passes out of the sector, the next dot comes into it, but slightly below, and it continues to move across. And then so on with the third dot, and so on. And so effectively, if you viewing within a, within a single sector representing one thirty second of the the disc, um, you know, tracing the path of of a, of a single dot, what you effectively have is a is a raster scan. So so one dot, you know, scans across, and then another one slightly below that, and so on, producing a series of lines. But then behind the disc is um, a, an LED light. Uh, back in the day, they would have used a neon tube, would have been uh, monochromatic, uh, uh, orange in fact. Uh, in this case, I'm using uh, an LED, three LEDs actually, one red, one green, one blue, and uh, with a little diffuser box, which I made out of some tape and cardboard. <clears throat> um, so by modulating the, the light from the LED as the hole moves across the diffuser, um, allows the TV to produce, you know, different light intensities at different points on the screen, which is essentially the same way that a, that a uh, cathode ray uh, tube TV works, um, although it worked since they're more or less obsolete now. But um, yeah, in the, in the 1920s, um, you know, this was really the only way that existed to, to make it an image, an electronic image of any kind. Um, then by around 1930, um, you know, they started to work with, uh, with CRT technology, which then basically, you know, mechanical technology became obsolete at that time. Here's another disc. So you can see uh, kind of more closely the arrangement of holes on the disc. So the image holes are these 32 holes around the outside. And again, both these discs were, were cut using a water jet. Uh, there's a few extra holes in the middle here. There's one for the motor shaft. This is for the, for the mounting hub. Then this extra hole here is a synchronization hole. So uh, in order to synchronize the, the light coming from the LED with the disc as it rotates, it's necessary to know where the disc is at any time. So as the disc rotates, uh, this hole, this extra sinkhole, passes through uh, the path of an optocoupler. Uh, you can't see it right now. I'll maybe open this up later. Um, but there's basically a, a small light beam and uh, with a detector on the other side. So when the hole passes by the beam, the beam can pass through the hole and the light is detected and it sends a signal to the, to the controller so it knows where the, where the disc is. Uh, this was actually the, the second disc that I um, used. Uh, so this disc has 32 holes, which gives 32 lines of resolution. Uh, the first disc that I started with was one which I made myself in the garage. So I actually cut this out with a, with a router from a flat piece of aluminum and, uh, and hand drilled each of these holes. So this disc only has eight holes. So the, the, um, the sector is, is, I guess, one eighth, one eighth of a turn, so about, about four inches wide. And that's the reason why the diffuser that I built here is about four inches wide. Uh, so with the 32 hole disc, you know, the active image area is smaller 
um, and but because the diffuser is larger, you see the uh, additional images on either side. I could blank those out with a uh, with a mask. Uh, at some point, I may do that. The interesting thing about this disc is that even though it only has eight holes, and I, I took uh, great care when trying to drill it, um, it, even so, it was still quite difficult to get the, the necessary accuracy. And it turned out that there was a little bit of um, uh, shift in, in, or error in some of the holes. Um, though fortunately, most of the error turned out to be in the rotational direction rather than in the radial direction. So that I was actually able to to go into the software and uh, program in some delay values to correct the error for each hole. Um, so that actually worked out quite well because initially, um, you know, some of the lines weren't really straight because the, uh, of the error in the hole and I was able to, uh, to make that look a lot better. Uh, but the, the, the water, the, the, the disc that was cut with the water jet is, is quite accurate and there was uh, no compensation was, was necessary. Let's take a closer look at some of the mechanics. Here's a close-up of the optocoupler used to detect the rotation of the disc. So the optocoupler is actually um, glued onto the, the open end of the, the metal bracket there uh, in alignment with the, uh, with the sinkhole. Where's the hole going? There it is. So when the hole passes uh, in the path of the optocoupler, it'll, it allows the light to, to go through and um, it's detected on the other side. And then that signal is, is sent uh, on the gray wire through to the controller board and then, then to the Arduino. Here's a closer look at the LED and the diffuser. The LED or LEDs, uh, red, green, and blue, are controlled through this cable here. And the LED itself is, is mounted on the back of this aluminum bracket and then surrounded by uh, this little sort of softbox diffuser, which I'll, I'll open up in a second here. Um, let's do that right now. Here's a closer look at the LED, which is used as the backlight. So there's actually uh, three LEDs, one red, one green, one blue, which are uh, mounted together in, in a single package. And um, they're more or less co-sided. They're, they're, they're very close. They're only a couple millimeters apart. So they more or less act as a, as a point of light. And then in order to, to form an image, uh, it's necessary to have this little diffuser. This one's just made out of uh, some uh, foam board and, and tape. But basically, uh, yeah, there's, there's foam in the front to act as a diffuser. I ended up having to put a little bit more material in the back as well to eliminate the hot spot in the middle. Um, you can see uh, in the video at the beginning that um, uh, the frame in the center, which is you know positioned right above the the LED, has uh, sort of a hot spot since um, you know the LED is directly behind it. So I think I need to improve the design of the diffuser a bit um, by using some proper uh, diffusive plexiglass rather than this this foam material. Uh, you can see in the in the video at the beginning that the um, the foam produces a texture which is visible even even though it's actually behind the disc when it's spinning uh, the, the texture of the foam is is quite visible you can see here that the, the disc actually isn't quite as flat as it should be it's got a bit of a warp in it and i guess that was um a result of the uh the water cutting process i i suppose um it may also be because this this disc is thinner than the the first one um, it's only about 30 thou thick, whereas the first one was about 40 thou thick. So it's got a bit of a, a warp in it. But um, I run it about 1500 RPM in order to sync with the camera. So at that speed, it, it kind of flattens out. <laughs> I won't go into too much detail on the controller. Uh, there's another video which um, touches on some of that. But just to, to point out, uh, I guess, some of the differences between this modern version and, um, you know, it's 1920s counterpart, apart from the fact that this one is color and, um, the original wouldn't have been, uh, is that, so this is, this is reading data from this SD card. So all the data is pre-captured and, and stored, and it, it just simply reads the data from a card and displays it. Uh, so that technology didn't exist a hundred years ago. And, um, basically there, there would have been a, a transmitter 
uh, using a camera with a similar kind of rotating disc to this. And um, in fact, because the system is so inefficient, uh, it required a, a lot, very strong lighting. And uh, I think it was probably quite unpleasant for the, for the subject. Um, and um, so it would, it would have been live transmission. And yeah, during the late 20s and early 30s, I, they did experiment with um, uh, brief uh, transmission of this type of signal by radio. But in this case, it's all just stored on an SD card. And um, I didn't feel like building a, a camera after building the, <laughs> the television itself. The other thing I'll just talk about briefly is the motor control. So it's a, it's a 12 volt DC motor and it's controlled uh, using pulse width modulation. So I can basically attain any speed between zero and about almost 3000 RPM. Um, and in the original version, I was running an open loop. So basically I would you know, set a, a, a preset value, which would give me roughly the speed I want, but it would take a long time for it to settle out of that speed. And it would also speed up and slow down a bit, depending on you know, temperature and uh, turbulence in the air and also how long it had been running. So in this version, I'm actually using active uh, PID control in order to uh, control the speed of the motor uh, and also to sync with the camera. Um, my camera has a shutter speed of, uh, and a frame rate of 25 frames per second. So uh, I run the disc at um, 25 rotations per second, which is about 1500, which is 1500 RPM and uh, allowing it to sync with the camera. But in order to do that, um, it's really, uh, you know, a secondary usage of the, of the sync information, which is coming from the optocoupler. So the sync information from the optocoupler is used to synchronize the video with the rotation of the disc. But in now this, in this version, um, the speed of the disc is also being controlled. Now the video will sync with the disc regardless, but by controlling the speed of the disc precisely, I can I can lock it to the uh, to the camera. So that's a brief overview of my mechanical color TV. I hope you enjoyed seeing it as much as I enjoyed building it.